Number 14. Find the following for path D in figure 3.56. Letter A. The total distance traveled. And B. The magnitude and direction of the displacement from start to finish. All right. And make sure we use the analytical method. Cool. So first let's calculate the distance. Remember the distance is the actual ground traveled. Okay. So let's highlight path D. Path D is here in looks like light blue. Starting at this particular location, uh, at the black dot, and it looks like it's ending at this location. So pretend, right, that you're in your car and you're driving this path. Okay, what would your odometer read? Okay, that's the distance. All right, so if we start here and we travel this way, we travel two blocks down, right? Remember, each block is 120 meters, so therefore I would have traveled 240. Okay, then I would have traveled in this direction. How many blocks? One, two, three, four, five, six. So I traveled six blocks. So now that would be a total of 720 meters. Then we go up, right? How many blocks? Looks like we go up one, two, three, four blocks. Therefore, that's 480 meters. And then we go on over one block, right, for another 120. So what would be the distance? Just add them up. So the total distance is the is equal to uh, vector uh, one plus vector two plus vector three plus vector four. There's four vectors here. So the total distance is 240, oops, is 240 plus 720 plus 480 plus 120, right? So the total distance that we moved is going to be 240 plus 720 plus 480 plus 120. So 1560. All right, great. So we got the same 15, 1560. Okay, and that's in meters. So that's the total distance. That's what your car would have read. Okay, great. Let's erase all that work on the, on the picture. All right. Okay. So now, uh, now for part B is we need to uh, find the magnitude and direction of the displacement. So remember that the displacement is simply the difference between the start and the finish. So this point represents the start, and this point represents the end. So the displacement would simply be the straight line distance between the start and the end. And I'll just draw that in. Whoa, way off. Try one more time. That's a little better. Okay, that line would represent the displacement. Now, uh, how do we how do we calculate this? Well, it's easy with this graph. I mean with this picture, right? Because we, we know how many blocks there are. So what we could say is we could say, well, I do know the x component of the displacement, right? The x component would be that vector. How many blocks did it cover? One, two, three, four, five. It covered five blocks. And therefore, that should have a value of 600 meters. That would be the x component. Okay, so let me actually write that over here on the left. The x component 600 meters. And then what would be the y component of that vector? Well, it would just be this vertical distance now. Let me make that a little straighter. Okay, and how many blocks did we move? We moved two blocks. Therefore, that's 240 meters, right? So the y component now of that resultant vector was 240 meters. They're both positive because they're both in the positive x and the positive y direction. Great. So, I mean, those are the answers, but that's not the analytical method, okay? But we'll use this as a check to make sure our answers come out correctly. So the analytical method is, is this. Basically, let's create a, let's organize it though, and let's create a component table in which we detail the X and Y components of every vector that we're dealing with. So we have vector one, vector two, vector three, and vector four. There's four vectors in the problem. If I were now to add these four vectors together, meaning their components together, I would then obtain the resultant components. Okay, this is the analytical method. So my job is to find all of these components of every one of the vectors. Okay, so let's do that. So let's take a look at the uh, problem at the top. Okay, oops. And let's start with the, we have to start with the first vector here, okay? So draw a set of coordinate axes or draw a set of uh, 
axes where the origin is at the beginning of the vector. Now notice this vector would have moved down two blocks, right? So there's no x component to it, so for vector 1 in my table it's going to be a 0. And there's only y component, and it's a negative 240, because it moved down. Okay, wonderful. So negative 240. So now let's erase that from our picture. Okay. Let me just erase. There we go. We'll leave it like that, okay? So now let's move on to the next vector. So if I move on to the next vector, I realize that it is this vector, right? Right there. And what I have to do is, here it's starting, so what I need to do is draw a coordinate system with the origin of that coordinate system centered at the beginning. And if I do that, notice how the vector uh, I wrote here, which represents the second vector, only has an x component. And it's in the positive x direction. We already found the value of 720. So when I put that value in my table, it's a positive 720 because it's in the positive x direction. The y component of that vector is 0. There is no y component. Great. Erase that. Okay. Now move on to the next vector. So here's the start of the next vector, right? And that next vector is this right here. Okay. Draw your coordinate axes with the origin centered at the start of that vector. Notice that vector is, has only y component to it. There is no x component. Therefore, the x component well, that I'm going to put in the table for vector 3 is 0. And what's the y component? Well, we already calculated the magnitude. It's 480. And it's a positive value because it's going up in the positive y direction. So that's great. Okay, wonderful. Last but not least now, so let's erase all that. Okay, just leave the, that value. And now our last vector is right here, right? This is the last vector now. So here's the start of that last vector. Draw your coordinate axis so that the center of that axis is at the beginning of that vector. And notice that that particular vector has a value of, in terms of its x component, has a value of negative 120 because it's pointing to the left. It's in the negative x direction. And it goes one block. There is no y component to that vector, therefore it's zero. Okay, wonderful. So now, what we need to do is, let's just erase this for simplicity's sake, just to clean it up a little bit. Okay, so uh, now what we want to do is now we're just going to simply add them together. Okay, add up all the components, add up all the x's, add up all the y's. So let's see what happens. So I'm going to add all of these together first. So we'll take 720, right, what's 720 minus 120? That comes out to be 600, right? So 600, and it's positive, correct? Remember the units are meters. Great. Now add up all of the y components. Negative 240 plus 480 should give you a positive 240 meters. So these should be the components for my resultant vector. The x component is 600 meters. The y component is 240 meters, and they're both positive. Well, guess what, guys? Look at the upper left-hand corner. What did we say it should be? X should be positive 600. Y is positive 240. And that's exactly what we found using the analytical method. Okay, you can always use the component table for the analytical method. I think it actually helps tremendously because it, it helps organize everything. All right. Uh, guys, thanks for tuning in. Hope this helped. Please remember to subscribe, and I'll see you next time.